Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode of McMillan and Morrow. <laughs> I'm Dr. Sean McMillan, it's my co-host Rich Morrow. And thank you for tuning in. It's going to be a great, great time together. We're going to have a good time. We're going to travel around the world. Hear some stories about people doing interesting things. Maybe learn a little bit, maybe laugh a little bit. Probably more than anything else, we're going to be shocked at the ridiculous nature of human beings. Yep. And so we're rich. Gonna, we're going to enjoy it. We're going to laugh. We're going to, we're not going to cry. But yeah, we're going to laugh and we're going to drop some gems today. Who says we're not going to cry? You never know on this show. You're yeah, right. I'm saying don't preclude the emotional palette. You're right. My bad. My bad. Yeah. I don't plan on crying today, y'all. So if I'm crying... It would be in complete contradiction to your fashion statement. It would. It would. See, that's why we're not crying today. We got smiles all around. Okay, could we do the, <laughs> the show? So, um, according to the New York Post, oh, we're God. starting in Florida, though. New York Post. <laughs> New York Post and Florida. This was funny. So, a Florida woman leaves her $2.5 million mansion and inheritance to no other than her seven cats okay so she left it behind um she has seven persian cats um she passed away and in her will she specified that the cats must remain together at the tampa residence that she owned because separating them would upset them they also received an unspecified inheritance to cover their expenses for the rest of their lives mm -hmm. however after living in a home alone in the, lot, in the house for six months a judge ruled that the cat should be moved to a place where they could receive better care, of course. I'm sure PETA stepped in real fast. And now they're being put up for adoption. Um, the case of leaving the assets um, to pets is reminiscent of a New York uh, real estate woman. Have you ever heard of a woman named Leona Helms Helmsley? Mm -hmm. um, the Helmsley she left, Hotel. Yeah, I know it. She left $12 million to her dog in a trust fund and later, re uh, later reduced it to $2 million. $12 million to a dog? What is the point of these stories? Is well, that, we do you think it should be possible to leave inheritances to animals, or do you think that money should automatically be allocated somewhere? Do you think it's selfish? Do you think it's... I think it's your money. You do whatever the hell you want to do with it. You leave it to whomever you like. Yeah. I, I don't... It's your money. You don't leave so it. you don't think there's... It's, I mean, it's a lot of money. That's the thing. It's yours. You're right. You leave it to whoever... I, I leave my money to this damn cup. If I choose to, yeah, you're right. I don't think you should be telling people what to do with their money. Yeah, you're right. I agree. I agree. Uh, and it's not something I would do. You know, I mean, that mm -hmm. says that says a lot about the pe the people in their lives. Do you think it's that, selfish? That they would rather what? Well, let, let me finish, let me finish the thought. Mm -hmm. I think it says a lot about the people who are surrounding them that they would rather leave their money to cats and dogs <laughs> than them than people. So yeah. you know, it says more about who who they surround themselves with. You're right. And how do you actually leave money to animals, though? They ain't got no bank account. They ain't got no. You probably they probably have to have. It's a trust. Mm -hmm. Someone manages the trust, mm -hmm. and then the trust hires someone to take care of the of the, the animal, animals. and then they make sure that the finances mm -hmm. of that all of that. I mean, that's, it's not that complicated actually. No, no, You're not okay. actually leaving the dog the money. Yeah, I know. You're giving it to a trust, and the trust is singularly dedicated to the animal, to the taking care of the animal. That's how that works. Um, but but how is that not better than someone who may not have millions of dollars, but let's say thousands of dollars, or hundreds of thousands of dollars, and they die without any plan for their money at all? How is that not better than someone who drops dead with no life insurance? So what does end up happening when someone passes away and they have a lot of money and they don't have a plan for it? You, you're missing the point. No, but I'm asking, though, no, but because I don't know. You're missing my I don't. Who cares? I get your point, <laughs> no, but I'm... But well, who right. cares? The point I'm making is... My question don't mean a damn thing. The point, the point, <laughs> no, we'll come back to it. The point I'm making is we can, we can poo-poo these people that had a plan for their money. Mm -hmm. Whether you give it to a dog, it's still a plan. Still a plan, you're right. We might want to give some advice today to folks who ain't got no damn plan, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Who've been working their whole lives, they got three, four kids, and mm -hmm. no will. Prince had no will. Mm. Aretha Franklin had no will. James mm -hmm. Brown, no will. Mm. So now people are fighting in court over, over these assets. Mm -hmm. That's at the level of rich people. Let's bring it down to people who are making $100,000, $50,000 a year. 
who who have made no provisions mm -hmm. in the in the event of their demise. Yeah. Because here it is. You ready for it? Mm -hmm. We live as if death is uncertain and life is certain. When the reverse is true, mm. death is certain, life is uncertain. And if you are uh, if you're over thirty and you have loved ones, mm -hmm. you ought to at least have a piece of paper somewhere that's accessible for somebody to yeah. know, this is what I want to happen. If and if you happens. have children, you better have a plan. Yeah. So I, I, could, I could make jokes to the people that leave their money to the dog, yeah. but I want to give some advice to folks who got kids and grandkids and ain't got no damn plan at all. Yeah. They didn't even have life insurance. Yeah. And that could change, how many, yeah. Listen to this. How many black folks that we know, black and brown people, and white folks may do it too, I'm not in white mm -hmm. culture, but how many black and brown people do we know who die and their family has to do a GoFundMe page? Plenty. Plenty. Mm -hmm. Aaron, can Almost you every time. We even see it with rich people um, that pass away. Their families be setting up GoFundMes after Totally that. different scenario. Though. No, but I'm saying no, they do that No, but stay focused. The point I'm making, no, I'm not poo-pooing. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm saying the point mm -hmm. I'm making is we see it too much. For sure. Where, where black and brown families have death in the family and no way to pay for the funeral. Mm -hmm. because, and not because they don't have access to money, but, but there's no plan. There's no plan. It's there's not no plan. something that was taught to we us need a plan, growing people. up that was a we part of our need curriculum. A plan. Yeah. Okay, and listen, I'm not saying I got the most thought out <laughs> plan, okay? I'm, yeah. I'm preaching to myself Yeah. Um, when I say that. But it is definitely vital to have one if you really care about what's gonna happen when you're gone to the people around you. Um, there was a man that I know I heard recently. Um, he's, I want to say he got diagnosed with a cancer or something like that. And because he's a super fan of Cristiano Ronaldo, I think it was Ronaldo, he left him all of his money. It was like $210 million or something like that. He left his Ronaldo whole fortune, money? His whole fortune. Gave it to him instead of... Like Ronaldo really needed that. I mean, listen was a super fan of him and was like, if I'm, I don't have anybody to give it to, I don't have any immediate family, he was like, I'm gonna give it to Cristiano Ronaldo because he's my favorite. Again, your money, do what you want to do with your money. I don't think people should be telling folks what to do with their I money. Agree. I agree, I agree. Leave it to whoever you like, out of my business. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to have something to leave somebody. Yeah, no, that's what I was about to you say. I feel like some people be worried that they don't have enough to leave anybody, but that's what life insurance policies are I'm, for. I'm a little lower than leave enough. I'm trying to have something. <laughs> something to leave. <laughs> you know, that like, was what I was thinking. I was like, well, I'm like, I'm over 30, but I'm kicked you over that right person? now. Oh, so, so I'll be acting like I'm at home in the living room. <laughs> when I start taking a sip of this cup, you know, I just get real comfortable and I forget where I'm at. Yeah, it's like I'm at the crib. And then I'll be talking to you. We didn't have these kind of All conversations right. but, but in without case, cameras in, for in so which case, long. You should realize that these are actual cameras. We really here. Right. These are television. Hey, y'all. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I forgot. Y'all didn't even hear me making. cuss. See, look, they didn't even know it happened because it got bleeped out. It. Which is the whole my whole point. Do it really have to be something? I gotta focus on they're gonna bleep it out. That's what, you know somebody what you got hired like? to do. You know what you sound like? What? Somebody at the BET Awards. This year. <laughs> that's what you sound like. Let's get back to the point. I'm not the guy that's just dropping stuff on the subject. floor because I know there's a janitor though. Change you know? the subject. So so that there's leave a lot, there's leave enough. And then there's having something to leave it all. I think people need to focus. Well, on. I need to get something to leave it all, people. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Nah, for sure, though. But nobody should. I don't poo poo what people decide to do with the ultimate. Oh, so final my question. My question. Yeah. Um, what happens when somebody passes away, doesn't have a plan, and the government comes in and has to, you know, take care of? you know, their finance, what happens to their finances? You know, it's interesting, in the state of New York, I only know this about New York, um, I think it's true for people and I think also think it's true for nonprofits. Mm -hmm. So let me hedge my bet and say, this is what I think is the case, mm -hmm. as I remember it. But when you die in New York, as I remember it, and you don't have a will or anything, mm -hmm. the Attorney General of the state of New York comes in, the state comes in, and they will adjudicate your estate. To who? To, to your creditors. You got to pay off your Anything bills. Anything. <laughs> and then I think, Tyler, you correct me if I got this wrong, um, they take the rest. The rest. Oh, my God. As if they need I, more I think money. I'm right about that. 
I think I'm right about this. But let's say for the purposes of this conversation, I am right, hypothetically right. That should be enough motivation for people to say, to do something. I need a plan. Yeah. Okay? That's why I asked, because I'm like, maybe if people know what happens, they'll be like, all right, I can't let that happen. Yeah. But, but what more often happens is that people, and you don't have a will or anything, before the state can take over, the family, try the to family <laughs> starts fighting over yeah, it. for sure. Right? I know that much. I mean, it's, very, it's very few cases where someone dies and they have no relatives at mm -hmm. all. It's very rare. Yeah. I, I think the state comes in if there's nobody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? If there's absolutely nobody, then the state mm -hmm. comes in and they pay off the creditors and then they say, well, thank you very much for dying. Mm -hmm. But if you have family members, it's, next it's a free-for-all. Is it the next of kin, though, that usually has the... But yeah, of course it's next okay, to but, but, but once you get out of the immediate, yeah, then, then, then it's, it's cousins. It's up and in the air. It's up in the air. It's, mm. it's, it's, now everybody has a right to whatever. I'm just saying, just decide what you want to be done. You've spent a whole life accruing, acquiring, and building, and you should have say-so in what happens. And decide what you want to be done. Make it clear. No one does nosy better than me. Photos. We found 378 photos. You he could what he do, because I don't you know how you sell that. These are years of snooping, okay? I know you nosy, too. Head over to Nosy, where you can watch full episodes of The Karamo Show, and be nosy with me. You know, this really makes me think about a lot. You ever, you ever, you ever think about, about planning your funeral? No. This is why I'm about to bring this up. I think that having that conversation, not just with yourself, but with people you care about and coming up with that plan is such a big step in, one, maturity, but also um, acceptance of the inevitable. Like you said, we live as if life is... <laughs> is certain and death is uncertain. It's literally the opposite way around, like you said. And um, to actually embrace that, just hearing us talk about it, I can see in myself and feel in myself the nerves around just sitting there and thinking about your death, your own death. That's not something I think people are most comfortable with doing often, and that may be why people be, you know, so standoffish about even those kind of subjects. Who knows? could be completely wrong, but for my feelings that just came up personally, I'm thinking to myself like, wow, that's not a subject I like thinking about often yeah, but at let, all. Let me, let me say know? this. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Socrates said that philosophy is the art of learning how to die. <sighs> that the true philosopher is the one mm -hmm. who is constantly thinking about their own death. Mm. Constantly trying to make sure that between today and death, certain things have been done, certain things mm -hmm. have been thought about. Yeah. And it's learning how to die, in my words, empty, having given it all, and all away. having not wasted any moment of it. Yeah. People who don't think about their own deaths mm -hmm. are not only delusional, but they are delaying the necessary condition for the possibility of their own greatness. We tend to be great when, mm -hmm. we, when we feel that something must be immediately accomplished. Yeah. We have some sense of urgency, and death is the thing that'll do it. Nothing to make nothing to make you more urgent <laughs> than almost than, dying. Than, 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 right, <laughs> You're thinking I'm gonna be dead. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So, <clears throat> we live in a culture that denies mm -hmm. the presence of death mm -hmm. because it lulls us to sleep into thinking that life is mm -hmm. perpetual. It is endless. Yet, watching in movies every it, day, it is still, an infinite and... resource that will never run mm -hmm. out. Isn't it kind of like such a crazy conundrum when you think about it? Because people play video games where they die every day. People watch movies where they see people die every day. You hear about stories on TV every day, scrolling through social media. And it's one of those topics that we all have to deal with. Like, no way around it whatsoever. We all have to deal with it. But it's something that universally, I feel like, is tough for everyone to fully accept. No, not universal. That's, it feels that's like true. that. Don't don't project. You're right. It's me. Right. But it's not. I don't. I from what from, from what I'm I'm hearing in a lot of cases though, um, the absence of even that 
thought process. Stop for a second. Stop. Because because this this is this is important. Mm hmm. And I'm not being rude, as you know. Yeah, I know. When you're younger, yeah, you have a different association. Yeah. With the event of your demise. When I was your age, yeah. I felt exactly the way that you did. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the way that you did. But do. you know why I'm feeling like like I'm having the thoughts I'm having right now because I heard you say thirty, and I'm wondering if that to you is the age where we should start thinking about it, or do you feel? No, I mean. I would say by the time you start to be 40, mm -hmm. I think you got about 10. But it's such a blessing to even get to 40. How many people don't make it to 40? Different point. Valid point, but different point. But I'm saying if we take care of it sooner, then we don't run into Let it. Let me answer the immediate question. Go ahead. I think if, by the time you're 40, 40. and 45, mm -hmm. you got to start seriously understanding okay. that this is not forever. Yeah. It's not infinite. And if I don't do this in the next... 20 years, 30 mm -hmm. years, I'm probably not going to have time to do it. Yeah. And, and if more people embrace that, not as some, you know, uh, what's the word, as something macabre mm -hmm. and melancholy. Yeah. But as, yo. This is for real. Like, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. And be intentional This is about, about legacy. Yeah. I got, tw I got 20 years to make the world remember me. Mm -hmm. Now let's go, let's go make that happen. And that one make more me point. sad. That makes me excited. No, for sure. When you put it that way. I got 50, by the way. I think it's perspective, for years. sure. But um, do you think that in retrospect, okay, you said 40, 45 is a good age probably to start focusing on it. Um, obviously, depending on your life situation and what you've accumulated, you know, up until whatever point. Changes that age. It definitely should, right? Yeah. If, you, if you're a millionaire mm -hmm. at 18, you should probably you do it right away. You got to think about it at 18. That's what I'm saying. Right. So I'm, I'm a, that's a great point you just mm -hmm. make. Excellent point. It, depending on what you have mm -hmm. a, you going know, accomplished or mm -hmm. going on or crude will kind of determine when you start thinking okay. about that. Because you're in your 20s. You know, how old is Chris Brown? He's 34 now. Chris is 34. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Chris Brown. Come <laughs> on the boy. show, Chris. What up, Because I'm a big fan of yours. I think you're a genius, by the way. I just want you to know that. And I'd love to talk to you about how much of a genius you really are. So I'm let's let say him know you, next time I see him too. No, I think he, I think he's absolutely <laughs> musically brilliant. He is, he is. He really is. Yeah. Um, but you're Chris Brown. You're 34 years old. Mm -hmm. You have to, and he has children. Yep. You have to think about this at 34. He can't yeah. wait till he's 40. No. Mm -hmm. He's got to have a plan. He's got to have something in place. Mm -hmm. um, but let's look at it this way. Y'all ready for this? Yep. What a blessing it is. At 25, 20. 34 years old, to have to sit down and plan what's going to happen with all that you've accomplished That's awesome. in just 20 years. That's yeah. awesome. It's a blessing, man. Yeah, it is. I don't have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He said, but oh, must yeah. it be nice for the yeah. people I'm that do? If I was 25 and had to think through that, I'd be like, I'm a blessed man. <laughs> yeah. There would be no apprehension, no yeah. melancholy. You'd be smiling all day. I'd be like, look, what? <laughs> Because the, the, the tough part of your Happy dance, purpose people. is Do almost taken me. care of. With me. What's that TikTok there? <sighs> I don't know the name of these dances. You know more about all of this now than me. He didn't pass me in the TikTok universe for sure. <sighs> oh. I'm going to just let him rock out. I would totally crazy. <laughs> there you supposed to stop me you when see I see what TikTok crazy, is man. doing? <laughs> But you're right, though. That's, that's a huge blessing. And I think the shift in perspective on that is huge because you just made it sound so much easier to talk about and hear and swallow and digest than just saying, oh, man, you better get that will together because you could die any minute right now. And See, you've, you've uncovered something. You've uncovered the, the, the deep point. And the deep point is it's not the subject. It's how you talk about the subject Absolutely. that determines the success of the conversation. I love when so many of our points tie in the things we've talked about, too, um, because we spoke about the whole communication they thing before. They should pay me more to do this show. We, be need, we need to start a university because I feel like we're really schooling people out here. Uh, okay, wow. That was... No, we're not starting here. Eminem University. Eminem, no. That sounds like some online... Thing. Well, what's the well, one just, that, just that had the Don't commercials. mention it so we'll get sued. I was about to. Don't mention it. 
Yeah. 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 Man, our viewers got some questions for you, Doc. Me? Just Mwah? for you. Okay. They don't want to ask me nothing. They know I'm going to just be laugh. Be careful with these questions. <laughs> don't, don't ask me nothing that's going to... No, these are actually okay. great questions. I'm actually really impressed. Okay. Go ahead. You ready? Yeah. These are questions I haven't even asked you. Okay. <sighs> Question number one. What's the best advice you've ever gotten? Um, the best advice... And who was it from? Um, the best advice I've ever received was from Gardner Taylor, who was my mentor. Mm -hmm. um, Google Dr. Gardner Taylor, those of you who don't know him. And um, he said to me, learn how to listen to the music of language, and it will, um, it will keep a roof over your head. Wow. And he's right. He was right. Exhibit A. He was right, yeah. Wow. Gardner but, but, Taylor, people. Yeah, but a lot of the practical advice I've either forgotten yeah. or didn't have, have. That's the one that stuck with you the most, though. Yeah, but that, that piece of advice, mm -hmm. because what he was giving me was, this is how, he, what he was saying, mm -hmm. when you don't look like you, <laughs> and you're not 6'4", mm -hmm. and you're not athletic, yeah. you better be smart. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. He was saying, learn the music of language. Mm -hmm. He was telling me what I was good at mm -hmm. and saying, that's how you're going to do it. Yeah. And I believed him. I thought, hmm, he might be right. I ain't 6'4". <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not 6'4". I thought I was going to the NBA, but that ain't going to happen. We well, all did at one point. You know what I'm saying? So I, yeah. I, I, I might want to pick up a book. Yeah. And rightfully so, you did. And look where it's gotten you. You've yeah. been able to, man, be in connection with some of the brilliantest, most brilliant minds in the world, people. It's awesome. Um, you ready for the next one? Yeah, I think. We'll see. So. I reserve the right not to answer. No, nah, you got to answer. Any question nah, I want. No, you got to answer. You gotta no, answer. I'm just telling you. I reserve the right. They expected you to probably say that, too. So I, if they've been watching the show, they know already. Go ahead. Don't worry. So. Our viewer said, I began seeing someone recently, and there has been an intense connection. Okay. Close as I felt to a soulmate. Mm. How fast is too fast in a new relationship? Should we pump the brakes or trust our intuitions? We're both in our 30s and know what we want. So how fast how is How long have they been there? Um, it, it doesn't, doesn't say, say, but it says... Um, doesn't say. Okay. Just new. How long, yeah. how long is too soon is the basic, basic yeah. question. Well... I don't think there's a standard answer for that. I think it depends on the person and the experiences that they bring to the table. <clears throat> if it is your habit to move too fast, then you should assume you're moving too fast. <laughs> yeah. Good assumption. Right? Mm -hmm. Because if, that, if that's your pattern, then you're probably in your pattern. Yeah, you should break that. And if you're asking this question, then you're probably in that pattern. Because when you know, you know. Sure. When you definitively know you don't need advice. That was good, Dr. That was Sean. real good. <laughs> that was when you good, definitively man. know you Woo, don't need advice. I can walk off the set right, <laughs> right now. <laughs> now and, <laughs> we can end this show right now. When you definitively know you don't need nobody to tell you nothing. It's and they're going to leave that on the screen in the bubble right below you. Yeah, go. <laughs> it, is, it is clear. Yeah. So this person is probably accelerating the pace because... Emotions and feelings and connections will make you do that. Mm -hmm. um, but, but let me be affirmative and say that's a good sign. It's a good sign it that is. you're connecting, you're vibing, you're feeling this person, you're willing to be vulnerable and open. So my advice would be to um, sit down with the other person. Communicate. And share with them your concerns about timing and continue to have, now that you feel that you might be ready, ready, Start having some hard conversations because mm -hmm. you don't know who you're dealing with until so you start talking about things that are difficult to talk about. You're right. And, and, and that means whatever emotional, so if you're insecure about your body, mm -hmm. if you're insecure about sex, if you're, whatever it is, mm -hmm. other people, 
Start having those conversations. And then you'll find out everything. And you'll see. Yeah. How the fast adult conversations. Yeah. Because it's really easy to talk about chocolate. It is. You know, who's going to win whatever. The- and on the contrary, sometimes you find out that it's easier to have those conversations with some people than others. And that's your answer right and there. And then you'll know. Exactly. Then you won't need my advice. You're right. Because you'll be, you're like, oh, I found him. Mm-hmm. Or oh, I found her. But sometimes the biggest fear for people is just having the conversation. But then you're not ready. Exactly. If I'm scared to talk to you about the things that matter to me the most. I'm not ready to. We're not ready. Yeah. Let's Give just, us some more time if that's the let's case. Just, you know. So if you can't talk to them, you have, you have your answer right there if you feel like you can't. But go for it. Ready? Last question. More? Okay. What is your biggest regret? I almost said something that would have got Tyler <laughs> got in trouble. Because <laughs> Tyler's fighting with the censors and the lawyers about a, an episode we did on a particular subject that I won't mention. But I almost, I almost said it just to get him in more trouble. My biggest regret would be that I didn't learn how to finish what I started sooner. Whew. I was not a finisher sooner. Might be mine, too. Um, and that I procrastinated too long. Valuable time. Yeah, but I give myself grace because if you came from where I came from. Probably wouldn't be here. you went through what I've gone through, procrastination and not finishing were the least of of my problems. problems. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? You know I feel that. So I give myself grace. I forgive myself. Mm -hmm. I've forgiven myself for all the things I didn't finish. And I've forgiven myself for the things that I did not take seriously mm-hmm. enough sooner. Yeah. And I say to myself, it's okay. It's okay. You, you did the best you could mm-hmm. with what you knew how to do. But now, let's go. Yeah. yeah. I love that. And that's our last question, by the way. And we're going to go to break after this. But it reminds me of a point. Um, there's people that go around to, you know, nursing homes and, you know, do things with the elderly and have conversations with them about these kinds of topics to learn and gain wisdom. And one of the most common answers among senior citizens that's been polled was Mm -hmm. um, that people wish that they allowed themselves to be happier. And you giving yourself that grace frees you up from that regret holding you back and it being something that you continue to do as a pattern and habit for yourself. And um, it comes with awareness, of course. Um, Usually probably an outside force making you more aware that that's what you're doing. But um, yeah, like living life without without really focusing on how valuable the time that you're spending is, I think is extremely detrimental to a lot of people because it's something in my life that I'm starting to become more aware of. I'm like, wow, I look back and I see my age and I see what I was doing in different periods of my life. I see where I was taking advantage of that time the most, times that I was procrastinating, times that, um, you know, led to other times because of procrastination that were tougher. Um, Do it now is something that I feel like is valuable to us all. Um, we, we spend so much time thinking about what we want to do. And if we put that same amount of time into doing <laughs> and figuring it out as we go, I think a lot more of us would be better off myself. Specifically, I'm speaking on. But um, I think that's great advice for anybody, man. Um, living a life of regret, when you see people in a nursing home, they got way more things to regret than all of us, you know, and to hear people wish that they could go back knowing that they can't, that's something that I think I'm most fearful of. Well, here's here's, here's an an additional observation Mm -hmm. from the point you're making. By the time you get into a nursing home, all the things you didn't do start to pale in comparison to the battles you're about to fight. Yeah. With health, The certainty. That we yeah, spoke I on. mean, so listen, by the time I get into a nursing home, and I know my kids, they could probably go put me in a nursing home. I know them. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, Let me know if I need to Yeah, I'm, I'm about let to them know, them. like he told me. I'm about to give you power. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> I know them. Um, at different stages of life, different battles feel differently. Absolutely. And so when you get to your, I'm Gardner Taylor, I mentioned Gardner Taylor, mm-hmm. right? 
So Dr. Taylor died when he was 97 years old. Wow. When he was in his 80s, and I would talk to him, um, he longed for death. Because all, all the, especially by the time he got to his 90s. Mm -hmm. all, his, all his friends were dead, loved ones were you dead, he had that. a daughter still mm -hmm. alive, but he, he had a different relation. I couldn't understand what the hell he was talking <laughs> Because you ain't there yet. You're like, like, oh, no. Nah. you high? I'm like, rather you, be here. You want to die? I'm yeah. trying to, because I'm, I'm in my 20s mm -hmm. and 30s, and I, got to, I have a different association with the subject. Yeah. Different stages of life will give you a different reaction at different stages of life. Yeah. And let that be OK. Mm -hmm. So today, time and procrastination is the thing that you regret. Yeah. Man, you get to be 90 years old. <laughs> it's going to be something else. You know, think about no time and procrastination. <laughs> what did the old folks say? Happiness. Yeah. I wish I had let myself be happy while I was procrastinating. Exactly. Happy while I was wasting time. At least I was happy. At least I was happy. I would, some folks say, I wish I would have loved more. Mm -hmm. I, not making any money, mm -hmm. living in a, in, a, in, a, in a studio apartment. But love. But loving somebody. Mm -hmm. See, these, these are the things I, I want. I, you know, and, you know, I'm as driven as anybody else. Oh. But I don't want us to be so driven to think that we got, we got this and that. And that. Listen, when it's all said and done, the, the final epitaph. Mm -hmm. The final encomium, the final eulogy of your life mm -hmm. should be a simple sentence. A simple sentence, an elegantly simple sentence. For example, at least I tried. At least I tried. For example. I gave it my all. I gave it all. Mm -hmm. At least, for example, I loved every day. Yeah. That, that's the encomium. There is no greater epitaph or eulogy about a life than, than I can boil it all down to something declaratively clear. That says it all. That says it all. I like that. I want a Grammy. <laughs> I want you to be to your awards. I got a million followers on TikTok. That's, that's the final, that's what you want us to say about your life? No. A million numbnuts followed you? <laughs> no. That's what the old folks teach us. Yeah. The elders. Mm -hmm. That's what they teach us. Yeah. And so we have learned. And that's the most valuable right there. We're going to go to another break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about a couple stories, and then we're going to hop into our video segment. How about that? 21st century. 21st century. Be we'll be right thing. back, y'all. Aaron, stretch your back. <laughs> Hunched over over there, man. Hey, that's what I just did. There you go. <laughs> See, Aaron? I try to get Aaron to talk into the mic. Yeah. Let's take a break. That's why, that's why I'm over here like that. There this you right go. Now, Aaron, take us to break. Let's go to break, people. See? Aaron. There it is. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. And uh, I see a video, which means we probably have a video and we have our headphones on. Am, yep. I, am I correct in these? You're 100% correct. We are definitely about to dive into these videos. And I feel like this first one's going to make us laugh. So let's see if we got it. All right. Got some comedy in store. Hey, um, hurry up and get dressed. I need your roommate to get some stuff from Home Depot uh, for your mom's garden. All right. All right, Dad. Slap. <laughs> What? No, uh, nothing. Uh, I just said slap. Slap what? Dad, you, you said get dressed so we can go to Home Depot, and I said slap. And I said slap what? Dad, sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan? Yes, exactly, <laughs> Dad. No cap. Oh, it's an acronym. <laughs> I don't know where I went wrong, your mom went wrong, or the school system. <laughs> but I don't know what the hell you're talking about or what you just said. <laughs> Since I don't understand it, I'm going to take it as this. <laughs> get in there and get dressed so we can go to Home Depot and get this stuff for your mom's garden. Okay. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Don't say a word. Please. He must have grew up in the same neighborhood as you. 
Because that's exactly I, what you would have said. I love the music at the end. <laughs> it's so somber. I was like, I was like riveted. It drew you in. <laughs> totally drawn into that. But again, this is what happens when you start thinking <laughs> in slogans, cliches, and acronyms. You don't. What What is the point of communication if the other person doesn't understand what you're saying? It becomes, there is no point. It's, it's narcissistic and selfish. Yeah. It's self-aggrandizing if I don't understand what you're saying. Yeah. Now, of course, we have to be willing to learn new languages. True. With each new generation becomes a new reformation, a revolution of the language. Mm -hmm. Totally appropriate. Happens all the time. My generation did it. Yours mm -hmm. is doing it. The one after you, they're going to do it too. They're doing too much. So, okay, well... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. The point I'm making is we got to be open to learning new words, but yeah. we also can't just speak in our idiom. Yeah. We have to we have to find a common reference by which we can understand each other. So he says slap, and it, but I didn't know what he was saying either. <laughs> now he told his dad, yeah. and the dad didn't understand it was an acronym. But if he never told him, but but, but we, even after he told us, his, his dad still didn't know what yeah. it was. <laughs> Because he didn't explain it he sufficiently, explain it, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, we brought this up before, effective communication. It's like you matter off not communicating at all if you ain't going to effectively communicate where somebody can actually understand what you're saying. I mean, what's the point of communicating, like you said? It ain't communicating. It's just talking. <laughs> you know, I think that I was, I was it just flashed into my head. So the great... The great spiritual giants mm -hmm. knew how to speak your language. So let's take the Bible's Jesus, for example. Mm -hmm. He knew how to speak fish to fishermen. He knew how to speak mm -hmm. sin to sinners. Mm -hmm. He knew how to speak religion to religious people. Mm -hmm. He knew how to speak money to tax collectors. Yeah, and work to carpenters. When, and, when yeah. you are truly trying to effectively get a message out, you can't just expect people to climb down into your syllables. Yeah. You have to be willing to travel and to traverse between their semicolons mm -hmm. and commas. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand their syntax and their grammar, you won't. And what, a lot, what happens, and let's take it out of like grandiose terms. Mm -hmm. Let's take it in terms of just relationships. Yeah. People you love, dating. If you're not willing to learn their language, yeah. you're not going to have much of a future with them. Mm -hmm. You can't expect people, you can't expect just to speak the language you've been speaking for 20 years. Yeah. You have to be willing to learn what she is saying, to learn what he is trying to communicate. Mm -hmm. and, if, and what happens most often when people mess up is they, is they lose, first they lose empathy, and then they lose the willingness to speak someone else's language. The moment you lose empathy and the moment you're no longer willing to be bilingual, the relationship is over. I don't care what happens. You mm -hmm. can have sex. You can have money. Mm -hmm. When the empathy goes and the willingness yeah. to understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. we're done. Yeah. It may take 10 years, but we go, we're done. Yeah. Want the best of Mari? Kevin. You are not. Want the best of the Steve Wilco show? Would you take Dave back if you left Katie? <laughs> Want the best of Jerry Springer? <laughs> Just download Nosy on your mobile device or stream it on Pluto TV, Samsung TV, or the Roku channel. Until next time, America. Um, are, are you going to wake up? Who, me? Yeah. I'm up. You don't seem up. We got some nuggets out of that. That's I, all I said. I need a little more. We got some nuggets out of that one. Very good. Play the video. <laughs> Watch me sing happy birthday to Busta Rhymes. Oh, I think I've seen this one. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't just sing. In real life. In real time. Wait, 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 w
definitely wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Start, over. Start over. Start over. Start over. Give me a hand. Soul. The woman in the background looked like she hated me. <laughs> she can sing. She can. He almost had that. Look, don't say it. Oh. He's uh, oh. he's heavy. Oh. Oh. Yeah. She made him cry. Oh. She made him cry. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Love that. Shout out to her. Shout out to her. Beautiful voice. She touched him. She almost moved him in a bunch of ways. No, he's. Nah, he's touched. For no, sure. he's touched. I'm just he's, touched. he's genuinely touched. That's beautiful. And Buster Rhymes is an amazing person yeah, too. Yeah. I know he appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No. You had to bleep her out too. Bleep her Bleeping out. me out. Um, don't do that. I'm just saying. No, I, I liked. I liked. Um, I liked the fact that, that he can still be reached. Okay. He definitely can. He allowed it. After you've gone through all the bravado and. All the grandiosity and and, yeah. and vanglorious the celebrityism of 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 rap culture. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you take on a very false yeah. shell, but she she could break through it with her voice easily. And it's amazing how sometimes you can send your words places that your hands can't reach. Mm. Yeah, right, and that and that sometimes people are wondering and waiting mm -hmm. when you get done doing all your antics in the bedroom and doing all your antics right you know what i'm saying right mm -hmm. doing all your antics in in the, in the in the in the moment of the creature craving creature craving there's some woman or some man waiting for you to roll over to say something that will speak to their spirit yeah because they they they're there because, with you in that because, moment no they're, they're there because they were hoping you knew how to say something that could reach them. Mm, that was their craving. That's that's what they that's what the soul wants. Yeah, the soul is craving. And and what and what that video shows is that yeah, you can be you can be Buster Rhymes and have multi multi million dollars and people mm -hmm. love you all over the world, but your soul every now and then gotta get fed. It, it, it still wants to be reached. And, and you know what was funny in the beginning that he said to her? Um, why are you asking? You know, it's always, you should always ask for forgiveness rather than permission, in my opinion. And he was almost like, just sing, like sing. You know, if you want to see me every birthday, sing me every birthday then. And you could tell she was a little shy. And I like the fact that she still, she delivered. She wanted to give that gift to him. And that was love. That was all love. Yeah, she did. She mm -hmm. did. She did. She knew how it could affect him. I don't know if she knew it would on the level that it did. But, man, it was beautiful to watch, wasn't it? Yeah. What would you do if someone sang happy birthday to you like that? Same, same scenario. Well, my birthday just passed, and you didn't sing anything. Because you don't tell nobody when it's your birthday. You act like it's a secret or something. Oh, you know, let me tell you what happened, by the way. So my birthday is uh, June 18th. That's my birthday. Um, cash app. <laughs> <laughs> Insert that one down right, there. Right. Put my cash app at the bottom. Um, so, he, so he texts me a day after? Or the day, day after. Day after. And says, oh, you didn't tell me it was your birthday. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Send out a, a group text? <laughs> Today's my birthday. Well, you don't. You didn't. You didn't even say that it was coming up. Some people would be like, "Yeah, well, my birthday. You might have had something planned. Something." Those are people who want people to know, know that it's their birthday. You didn't want me birthday. to know that. You didn't want nobody to know. It's not, it's not that I didn't want anybody to know. You just didn't care to tell us, huh? No. Can I finish a sentence in mm. this episode? I'm just trying to figure out where your thought process on not telling me started. I would love to tell you. You're not gonna tell me though. You're gonna make up 
Go ahead. You're going to make it sound good, though. Go ahead. I'm going to make go it ahead. sound go ahead. good. Is it, is it's going to sound good. Go ahead. No, I want to hear it. Go ahead. This, and go this, ahead. No, 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 extra. This is how married couples end up divorced. <laughs> is, I want to hear it. You're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't, right? If I tell him, he's going to condemn me. If I don't tell him, I'm going to... I can't win. I can't win, people. Look who is talking. You put me in the damn situation about <laughs> anybody. I'll be like, you know what? I should have just shut up and not said nothing. <laughs> so the man's my birthday he texts me and says, oh, you tell me it's your birthday. And I'm like, well, whenever you remembered it, thank you, right? Yeah. I mean, I. I and you don't take it personally. I don't even know. How, how did you know it was my birthday? I don't even remember, honestly. I really don't. I might have seen. Something? Something pop up like a Facebook notification. Or, probably, that's probably what did you what do was. on your birthday? Nothing. Nothing. I smoked cigars. Yeah. See, now, if I knew it was your birthday, though, I probably would have wanted to pull up and smoke a cigar. I was in New York. Oh, so you wasn't even here. Yeah, well, I was in New York, uh -huh. yeah. I, was, I smoked cigars and just chilled yeah. and said, let's make this a good year. Another trip around the sun. Well, I'm glad But to answer your question, if somebody's saying happy birthday to me in that way, I would be, you know, grateful, and I don't think I would be as moved as Buster. Yeah. <laughs> but but, I, but I, you also weren't there, so it's different. Yeah, and I'm not being pejorative. Yeah, I know, I'm I just know. saying my journey to that moment comes with a lot more openness mm. and more used to being vulnerable yeah. than his journey to that moment. You're right about that. So, so it would have it it been stark to him, mm -hmm. novel, yeah. you know, unusual for mm -hmm. him. Whereas for me, not so yeah, much. I got you. I cried three days ago. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I was just sitting there, just like. And also, let's collectively wish Doc a happy belated birthday because he kept it a secret from the world, which we all just found out. But he made it sound so elegantly smooth by saying, I'm saying, no, no, I just smoked no, a cigar. No, no, no. I didn't do this. Well, you could have told us it was your birthday. What's so the, if anybody wants to bless him, what, happy birthday? No, 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 no. Cash App. All I want for my birthday is a big booty. Whoa. Not that one. I know that one. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> anyway, let's, let's so stop. So I got a let's question. Stop. I'm going to leave this last. Cash App. Cash App. I'm going to leave this last um, five minutes up to you. Do you want to do another video or would you like to go on to one final story? Video. Video it is. I hope this is good. Uh, Me too. I hope it's good. Am I allowed to sing on this show? Yeah, you mean, can do whatever you like want. Your name is right J there. Just for the record, I can sing, people, okay? One day I'm going to sing for real, and you people are going to be astounded at the secret talents that I have that nobody knew about. It's not a secret no more. Well, I haven't actually sung. You just told us, though, so it's not a secret. Oh. Well, I haven't verified. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my Your God. Accent. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Lagos. <laughs> Please make sure we land this plane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, don't let us die. <laughs> Land the plane, Jesus. Land the plane, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God. We're ready. We're ready. We're done being silly. Whoa. Oh, this is going to be awesome, actually. I can already tell. Is that a monkey? It's an orangutan. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, that's the madness, bro. Bro? So <laughs> oh no, he's taking God. your jacket off. Oh my God. Take it off, help him. Help him. Oh my God. Take it off. It's, it's, oh my no, he might put your coat on, bro. Right, it's fine, let him take it off. He wanted jacket. That's sick. Oh my God. No, what? that is gone. Because can I put it on? Can I put it on, bro? He's not going to put it on. Oh bro, he's going to put it on, bro. He's looking at his belly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. no. Oh my God. Yo, they're humans. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, TikTok. <laughs> I like that. TikTok should be a sponsor on this show. <laughs> oh, man. One day. I mean, I don't always say great things, but you're kind of winning me over. Uh, it's just so damn much on there. <laughs> what is uh, what is what are we supposed to get from this? Why Entertainment. Did, why did you show me that? A, mon I didn't a show monkey you it. putting on a jacket. First off, that's probably a question for Tyler. But second of all, um, Tyler, what were you? What, did you not what? enjoy the video? No. What, what, what were you? What were you trying to accomplish in, in this? We're attempting variety here to see what lands. So that was, How did you not enjoy that video? <laughs> I mean, it was, it's an orangutan. That was more for Reg, you know, than, than an orangutan putting on a jacket. Well, orangutans are the closest 
of the of the primates to humans. Out of all the yeah. you know chimps, they're, they're gorillas, they're, all of that. Those are called primates, right? Yeah, out of all the primates. Yeah, they're they're, they're, they're the close, closest orangutans. Closest to us, yeah. Huh. They have they have they have great brains. He looked like a little old man, well. <laughs> didn't he? Okay. <laughs> With thin hair. <laughs> I will never sell my soul. Cash app. That's the song <laughs> I'm singing. What what is that from TikTok too? No, I think isn't that Roddy Rich? Oh, oh. <laughs> you're talking about the box. The box. <laughs> is that right? Did I get it right? I, I, uh, I, I mean, I'm on it now. I got you. See, she, I, he doesn't say that. He doesn't say I will never sell my soul. I it? can't say what he actually said. That's not what he said. No, he, he, don't say it. I say it when we get off of air. But if y'all Cash know the app. song, y'all know what he's trying to say, and that just made this show absolutely hilarious because y'all know. If you know, you know. What does he say? I can't say it, because can, y'all, can, you're going to definitely inf- get me fired. It's just going to be McMillan if I say that one. Can you infer without saying it? Nope, I like my job. Can you put the lyrics up on, on, on the Nope, thing? he can't do that neither. <laughs> it's going to be all <laughs> asterisks. <laughs> she asterisk, asterisk, uh, asterisk, asterisk, soul. Oh, sexual. Very. I want to know what he says now. I'll tell you when we get off of the air. Y'all can go Google it, too, because we ain't putting it on here. I like. I had job. the wrong lyrics. <laughs> I thought he was saying something else. You made a very, very PG version of it, and it, it worked for this, so I'm glad you did. Are we done with the episode? We are done with the Shout episode. Shout out to Roddy Rich, by the way, who Shout I also think is a musical genius. Keep going. Do your thing. And stay, stay in the music, okay? Don't let the, the accoutrement of the culture distract you. You were born to do this, son. Now go on and do it. Amen. All right. See you next time. McMillan and Morrow. This is a good one, y'all. Hey, everybody on the YouTube. Thank you for tuning in. If you like what you see, make sure you like and comment and share. Because we got to spread the joy, people. That's how it goes. See you next time.